Ariane Gavro is our next speaker. She'll be talking about Snack Talk, giving kids something to talk about. So when was the last time that you experienced one of those lengthy, awkward, uncomfortable pauses over a meal? You've had this experience, right? Sitting across the table from someone or with a group of family or friends and not really having anything to say. Maybe this was dinner with your in-laws or a holiday meal, a bad date. We've all had this experience, right? Meal times are naturally a social routine. And when conversation lacks, it can get awkward. So let's shift our thinking to preschoolers, who are certainly awkward, but in their own adorable way. As a teacher running a program for young children with autism, I noticed that meal times were an especially difficult part of the day. The kids in my class were still learning to follow multiple step directions. They were working on trying new foods and the adaptive skills that are necessary to eat and to drink independently. And because everybody in the classroom had autism, social communication was especially hard. We know that individuals with autism may struggle to initiate and to maintain appropriate social interactions with other people. But it's important to note that there are a lot of preschoolers without autism that also struggle with these things, right? Nevertheless, some children in my class were nonverbal and used pictures to communicate. Other children were dual language learners. Some kids had incredibly large vocabularies, but really preferred to only talk to teachers and then to speak about very narrow topics, things like the Washington State Ferry System or Amazonian tree frogs. Other children engage in high rates of challenging behavior and tended to leave the snack table in search of more interesting things to do in other parts of the classroom. We know that mealtimes are an important, shared social routine in many cultures and many families and can take up a large part of our day in preschool, but young children with disabilities and children who are dual language learners may struggle to fully participate in these routines. We know that the natural structure of kids seated around a table can lend itself to some lovely and meaningful interactions for kids without disabilities, but some of our kids in these preschool classrooms may struggle to participate in these meaningful conversations. And as a result, kids can miss out on crucial opportunities to develop relationships, to build friendships, to build community, and to be seen as full members of a group. We strive to create inclusive early learning environments, but we know that simply placing kids with and without disabilities into the same classroom does not lead to the development of reciprocal relationships, does not necessarily create an inclusive classroom. Rather, teachers must provide systematic instruction and ongoing opportunities and supports for kids to engage in positive social interactions with one another. We need tools for inclusive classrooms. So we developed a visual conversation board that we call a snack talk. And the idea behind snack talks is that anybody at the table, regardless of their language or their ability, can use them to have a conversation. So you don't need to be able to talk to use a snack talk. We started by brainstorming things that we thought kids might be interested in discussing. Things like their favorite movie or cartoon character, their favorite iPad app, places around Seattle that they had gone, or what they like to do at recess. And snack talks always start with a question at the top, like, who is your favorite character in Moana? Or what do you like to play outside? And then 9 to 12 images below. Now, instead of verbally responding or asking a question, kids can point to interesting images on these visuals and have a conversation with their peers. With these visuals, with Snack Talks, kids can have a conversation without requiring spoken language. Snack Talks give kids something to talk about. Now we've studied their use in preschool classrooms serving kids with and without disabilities, and our data demonstrated that when these were available, kids talked more to one another and less to their teachers. They initiated more conversations and they responded more to their friends. They also engaged in fewer instances of challenging behavior and they stayed at the snack table longer. And we've presented these findings in conferences and in parent groups, and we've had parents modify the idea of a snack talk and create placemats for their children to use at home. Teachers have cut out images from school supply catalogs when printing and lamination weren't available in their buildings. We even had one resourceful teacher had her students create their own snack talks as part of an art activity for use in the classroom. So Snack Talk is a class-wide intervention, benefits a range of diverse learners, including children who use augmentative communication, are dual language learners, and kids who might engage in high rates of challenging behavior. This easy-to-use intervention can be created from low and no-cost materials and can promote the full participation of all children in a classroom, regardless of their ability. Now, when I think about my hopes for early learning in Washington, I think about empowering every child to fully participate in all routines in his or her classroom and teachers implementing easy-to-use strategies that benefit all learners. I think about kids developing meaningful relationships with one another through their shared interests. 
as adults, we'll probably always be subject to those awkward conversations and clumsy pauses, but these have no place at a preschool meal. With Snack Talk, mealtimes can go from a required routine to a lively, inclusive, and dynamic activity when everyone can participate. Thank you.